Thank you for speaking to us. Um, you seem to disagree with what the president has done today in as far as the changes being effected in the police force. Why is this? Well, uh, for starters, um, I have read the president's statement, which I believe was given at the close of, uh, I think it was a passing out parade or a conference, security conference. And the title of uh, the presentation is a policy framework on restructuring of the command and functioning of the police service. And my understanding of it is that it was a statement of intent, a proposal in terms of what uh, the president intends to propose that we do. Uh, but I saw towards the conclusion that there was a directive that it be effected immediately. Whether the president is right or not, whether anybody supports or does not support, it must be appreciated that the current structure is one that is based on the Constitution and that any changes to that structure must invite visiting the Constitution. To my understanding, that has not been done and that therefore makes those changes unconstitutional in my view. There is no power in the Constitution for the President to effect changes in command and structure of the police. That power is reserved for the Inspector General but within that structure. Now, it is possible that you could say that the president was merely voicing what the inspector general had agreed to do. But unfortunately, the statement it says, says that he had directed the inspector general. That raises the next problem. Under the constitution, no one can direct the inspector general on what to do, including in terms of the structure. To the best of my knowledge, and being a member of parliament, as parliament, we have not had occasion to discuss these changes. And most certainly, as parliament, we have not effected any amendment to the act. And what that means, and that brings me to the last and, uh, point, uh, which I think is very fundamental, consultation and public participation. If there was to be such an occasion for public participation, that is where then Kenyans would give their views on a variety of things, including the color of the new uniform, which I've seen, appears to borrow from the east. Uh, whether that is a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. There's a section of Kenyans that believe that uh, the security bill that was signed into law in December of 2014 could protect the president in as far as uh, giving him the power to change this command and not necessarily mean that it has to come from the IG. There is no legislation that can override the constitution. And the constitution is clear in terms of who has the authority uh, over the National Police Service Commission uh, at, a, at a policy level, which is the National Police Service Commission, at a command level, which is the Inspector General and the two deputies. And as far as remedies go, and if it were up to you now, what should be done to ensure that this is done right because you believe this has not been done right? I would take it as a statement of intent, I would generate debate on it and discussion. I would make sure that that discussion goes as far as parliament so that the parts of the act that need to be amended can then be amended. But I would not do that immediately. I would generate that debate, pocket it and put it aside because we must be aware that as a country there's an initiative that the president and Raila launched which is also supposed to look at a, a wide-ranging issues, including the issue of security, I would then package it in that context so that I determine whether there's any other amendment we require to the Constitution through that process. And if we do, then I would bring them together. Tende Molo, many thanks for speaking to us Thank on Citizen Television. Thank you. Mm -hmm.